Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us to the world to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So whosoever finds him or herself as a Muslim, there are duties, roles, responsibilities, and there are certain things that are expected from us as Muslims. But obviously we know Primarily, we are here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this in the Quran. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind nor jinn kind except so that they worship me. This is the main reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created myself and yourselves. This is the primary reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us. But what happens? We come to the earth and we meet different things. We meet a lot of things. We meet different people, all created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is expected from us as Muslims is that we remain steadfast and we remain focused upon our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? Right. Mashallah. So we are here to worship Allah and that is why we are meant to be steadfast. What does it mean to be steadfast? It means you become focused, you become concentrated upon why you are here, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah chose parents for us. Allah brought us to the world and he chose these parents for us. And then we grow up, we find ourselves as Muslims, we grow up and then we come in a society where there is different types of people. We come from different families and different homes. We grow up, we meet different friends. We grow up, we walk in different places. We grow up, we go to different schools. We grow up, we love different things. We get married to different people. We do a lot of things, all part and parcel of life. But remember that life is also a test. Life is also a test. And we know this. I'm getting somewhere. All what I have mentioned, I said, are what part or is what part and parcel of life. Can I tell you of an organ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us within us? I think I want this fan to be off. The fan. Can I tell you of an organ? If there's no problem, the fan is meant for me, right? So it can go off. Can I tell us of an organ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us, each and every single one of us, mashallah, much better, each and every single one of us has this organ in us that Allah has granted us free of charge it pumps daily and every pumping is called what the heart beat so I, I know by now you know the organ I am talking about which is the heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted each and every single one of us heart and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says 
ala wa inna fil jasadi la mudwa idha salaha salaha al jasadu kulluhu wa idha fasadat fasad al jasadu kulluhu ala wa hiya al qalb behold within the body there is a piece of flesh if that piece of flesh is good the whole body becomes good but if that piece of flesh is bad the whole body becomes bad what is that piece of flesh ala wa hiya al qalb behold it is the heart that is why it is important you see allah has granted us the heart it becomes yours and mine our responsibility to ensure that we make our hearts clean and pure how do you make your heart clean and pure so many ways allah has told us the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us as well but do you know that if you refuse to do these things to make your heart pure or purer and purer it becomes dirty and dirty dirtier and dirtier it's like a video i saw on the social media right so they dropped uh, a bucket or a bowl with clean water inside and then they started pouring something inside the clean pure water maybe some liquid with chemicals but the, the main thing is the water is white and what they were pouring is black and they kept pouring they kept pouring in the water they kept pouring until the whole white water became black subhanallah think about your heart you come to the world your heart is pure every one of us our parents give birth to us pure but then as we grow it's now our choice what we do with ourselves what we do with our hearts and then the heart either becomes clean or dirty so it's like that water if you keep on sinning against allah you keep on doing wrong things it gets black and dark and darker it keeps on getting darker if you engage in istighfar you engage in the remembrance of allah the heart becomes cleaner and cleaner it's like the opposite of the same video so in the same video then they took some chemical as well which is pure after the water had been made black by the first chemical and they kept pouring they kept pouring and they kept pouring until the water came back pure as it was before it turned black this is an example a beautiful example we can apply or think about if your heart is pure and you've engaged in so much sin and you think to yourself you've sinned against allah allah is unhappy with you don't think about that قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم say oh my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves don't lose hope don't give up hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed Allah forgives all sins and Allah is the most forgiving most merciful so the same thing with the water it turned black but when they kept applying the chemical for it to become white it became white the same applies to us you sin against allah so much keep engaging in istighfar allah would forgive you and you can become as pure as you were before you engaged in the sin so don't lose hope that's a problem a lot of us have people engage in so much sin and they give up hope in the mercy of allah a true muslim doesn't give up hope in the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah is the most forgiving the most merciful subhanallah so we have to purify our hearts and that's why there is so many do as we say we ask allah to make our hearts pure and to turn our hearts towards the deen to turn our hearts towards the obedience of allah to turn our hearts towards the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us true, genuine Muslims. Wallahi, crime is hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Crime is hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You could sin against Allah. Allah would forgive you. But do you know that if you sin against the servant or worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then now it is something that is got to do with the person who you've sinned against forgiving you or not. You sin against Allah, you engage in istighfar, Allah forgives you. Right? You sin against someone, if that person refuses to forgive you, you are in hot soup, as they say. It's so sad today, people engage in a lot of crime. Why? For something dunya. Dunya, mataun kalil, subhanallah. For the dunya, people engage in all sorts of crime. Because you want to own a Lamborghini, right? You want to own a Bugatti or a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce or a Porsche Cayenne or whatever car you want to own for the dunya. Something that you would die and live on the earth. It won't follow you to your grave. Nothing would follow you to your grave or my grave besides our deeds. So it's important we fear Allah. Wallahi, Islam is the most beautiful religion. We have a lot of things we can learn and we would live our lives by and life would be so beautiful. How would a brother, Muslim brother, kill someone? Be them Muslims or not, killing murder is something that is totally wrong and unacceptable for you to kill someone else, especially unjustly. You have a heart. You have a heart. You are a human. Don't you have some iota of sympathy in your heart? I was discussing with a brother yesterday, a beautiful discussion. The brother walks in the prison yard and he was telling me a lot of things. Subhanallah. A lot of things that is sad for us today as Muslims. Muslims doing this and they know that what they are doing is sinning against Allah. Huge sin, but they don't care. Imagine someone killing somebody unjustly and you, they tell you, you know what? We kill or they kill. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. They kill, you know. If they are doing their operation or their job, they will kill. If you come in their way, they kill. Even without money. So why wouldn't they kill when they are being paid to kill? Look at what they are saying and they are Muslims. And they are telling you if they are doing their operation and you, I, I think we know what they mean. Maybe some robbery or whatever they are doing. They kill if you come along their way. Even without money. So why wouldn't they kill when they are being paid to do that? La ilaha illallah. Where is our iman gone? The ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Killing someone unjustly when you are told when you kill in such a way, it's like you've killed the entire humanity. And if you save a life, it's the same thing. Vice versa. Where is our heart? Where are our hearts? Where are our hearts torn into? When Islam is the most beautiful religion, we are supposed to have this sympathy, this pity for our friends, our families, our loved ones, and humanity at large. But people today have become selfish. People today have become selfish. Everyone wants to selfish, right? Subhanallah. Everyone is selfish now, just for the dunya. People want to gather everything here and they leave. And the funny thing is, it's even better when you gather the dunya in a way that you earn your akhirah as a result but you focus so much on the dunya that you lose your akhirah that's two zero you've lost both you've lost both
yahsabu anna ma lahu akhnada that's a verse in the quran right he gathers wealth so much so he thinks his his wealth is going to make him immortal is it the word he is going to save him from being dead or to live forever and his wealth is going to save him from death subhanallah a true muslim is the one who understands why we are here we are here to worship allah crime is so much hated by allah so i kept on discussing with the brother who works in the prison yard he told me a lot of things what happens in the prison yard or why is or why are people taken to the prison yard probably not probably people are taken to the prison yard let's be more realistic when they engage in the crime or whatever they might have engaged in and at the end of the day they may be sentenced one year two three four five or whatever years they would be sentenced for and they are taken to the prison yeah right and they locked up for whatever reason it may be even though sometimes people are locked up unjustly due to some reasons at the end of the day they realize that the person was the right who, the one who was right and then he is released and so on but let's talk about those who engage in the crime and they were taken to the prison they are taken there to change and become better people i think now they say there is a new word it's called the uh what's the word again for prison now is it correctional center or something am i right so they are taken there so that they can change and become better people so imagine a muslim who is taken there hoping after some time he repents and he becomes someone better and he comes out and he only becomes somebody worse than what he used to be he only becomes worse than somebody who he used to do you have to go to the prison you have the quran you have the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah has told you in several verses in the quran the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught you a lot of things from his sunnah the ahadith isn't that enough wouldn't you be able to live your life with what allah has granted you must you live your entire life in stealing for example whatever you may be stealing there are people who live their lives that way their entire lives their entire source of income comes from theft theft that's it every car they get theft every house they build theft whatever they get in terms of income theft what type of a life is that and you know you would be returning to allah aren't we afraid aren't we scared of the day we shall be meeting allah سبحانه وتعالى يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون الا من اتى الله الا من اتى الله بقلب سليم the day when your wealth and your kids won't help you won't save you except the one who comes with a clean heart with a good heart with a pure heart aren't we afraid of this day and we shall be returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is this life all about how many people don't have nothing in terms of wealth and they are content and they are the most happy people a true muslim is the one that when a test comes he realizes that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he changes his life and he becomes calm inna allaha idha ahabba abdan ibtalahu if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a servant he tests them ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الاموال والانفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين اذا اصابتهم مصيبه قالوا انا لله وانا اليه راجعون اولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمه واولئك هم المهتدون الله سبحانه وتعالى تنزل ولا نبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع we will definitely test you bi shay'in min al khawf 
waljo with a little bit of fear and hunger wa naqsim min al-amwal and loss of wealth wa lanfus and lives wa thamarat and farm produce wa bashir sabirin give glad tidings to those alladhina idha asabat hum musiba those whom when a disaster or a calamity befalls them they say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un we belong to allah and unto him is our return ulaika alayhim salawatun mir rabbihim wa rahmah wa ulaika humul muhtadun they are those whom upon them are blessings and mercy from their lord and they are those who are rightly guided subhanallah life is very simple don't get carried away by this life everything here is temporary your akhira is the most important thing if you live here how many years 60 70 right average 60 70 80 maybe if you are lucky 90 very lucky 100 you've lived here for 60 years and you go to your grave and you are in your grave for thousands of years have you thought about that how many people have been buried thousands of years ago and they are still there? Would you waste your 60 years here because of what you see here? When you came, what did you come with? You came alone. When you are going, what are you going with? You are going alone. You are only going with your deeds and the white shroud. Everything you see here, you are living with here. Allah has promised you better things in Jannah. Sometimes we don't think, you know, about Jannah, about what Allah has told us, what Allah has promised us. Work hard and what you shall be getting in paradise, you would realize that this life is nothing. Nothing. Yes, enjoy. Enjoy. If Allah has blessed you, enjoy by all means. Enjoy your life. Reach out and enjoy in the best, in the halal way. But don't become too focused on this life in a way that you lose your akhirah absolutely important so I spoke about a lot of things the heart of a believer is supposed to be pure and clean such that we become better Muslims and Allah loves us more and more because when the heart is pure the entire body becomes pure and we stay away from crime or sin in the best possible way Nobody is perfect. That is for sure. But do you know that Allah sees us and Allah knows what is concealed in the heart? Allah is aware. Allah knows those who have an intention of changing for better. There are different types of people. There are those who, when they see, they feel the remorse they feel the pain they regret and they wish so badly that they become better people and those who or whose hearts are dead when they sin against allah they don't feel anything you sin against the one who made you you don't feel nothing people who are married people who are into haram relationships for example whatever type of relationship it may be Maybe girlfriend, maybe your wife, halal wife, maybe your best friend. How do you feel when you do something they don't like and they feel and they become so angry or they, they show you they don't really like what you've done? You feel so sad, right? And you want to look for how you can rectify things because you don't want to lose your friend. Would you sin against the one who made you and you don't feel anything? Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. The Lord of the heavens and earth, Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must fear Allah in the best possible way. Wallahi, this reminds us, we keep getting them on and on and on. A lot of us are lost in the social media, the social networking platforms. And every day, more platforms are being created. TikTok, right? Recently, Twitter became X. It's either... Your Iman becomes better or it X's your Iman? Yeah? What is X? X means quit, right? You use these platforms for your Iman to become better and spread good or it X's your Iman? Have you thought about that? SubhanAllah. They created threads. What are you threading? Threading good or threading bad? 
What are you threading? Are you threading good or you are threading bad? These platforms can be used to achieve so much good. At the same time, it can or they can be used for somebody's destruction. TikTok, another issue on its own. TikTok, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You know, the thing is, that's why, like I said, we need these reminders constantly. When TikTok came out, I clearly remember, right? Everyone was like, haram, haram, how is this? This is so, this and that. Look at what people are posting, the ummah, what's going to happen to the Muslims and so on. Today, almost everybody is on TikTok. I might have an account there as well. Why? Because gradually, there is no other way, but people have just found themselves there. Because the thing is, if you see those platforms and you leave them for those who want to post bad and they keep posting bad and bad and bad slowly but surely people would fall there in there Muslims and the only things they would see is bad so why won't the Muslims then take over that's why a lot of the Muslims are there and today I would say yes there are a lot of good content on TikTok being posted by Muslims that's for those who post good content. At the same time, there are those who post bad. But now, at least, we would say, we would acknowledge that there is a great change. There is a significant improvement. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us focus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us focus. Wallahi, a true Muslim who understands what life is all about is the one who calms down and realizes that he is here or they are here to worship Allah and they would return to Allah someday it is very close it is very close very close when death comes that's it we are gone don't we constantly think about that death we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. I've spoken a lot here and I hope the lesson is for myself and yourselves. Let's keep calling people towards goodness and understand that you and I, we don't have the power or the strength to guide someone. A lot of people are critics and extremists, for example. Something that is not, I spoke about it today after Fajr in another mosque. Something that is not haram, people make it haram. Something that is halal, people make it haram. What's happening? Why? Why? We don't have hope for people. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? مَا مِثْلُ خَالِدٍ يَجْهَلُ الْإِسْلَامِ سَوْفَ يَأْتِي بِهِ اللَّهِ Khalid ibn Walid what happened? The Prophet had hope in him. Someone like Khalid, how would he be ignorant of Islam? And what happened? Slowly but surely he came and he took the shahada. Allahumma a'izza al-Islam bi ahad al He made the same dua for the two Umars and Umar ibn Khattab came. Fourth, that was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had hope in people. Today, small things someone does, you throw him in Jahannam. I see if you own the keys to Jahannam. None of us own or is in control of the keys, neither for Jannah nor Jahannam. When Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful, and we don't have hope for people. Any small thing, you call someone a jahil, you call someone a kafir, you call someone this and you call them that. Who are you to judge them? Aren't you supposed to be having hope in them? Have hope become. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawizati al hasana. Call to the path of your Lord with hikmah, wisdom, and in a good style, with, in a good pattern. Subhanallah. And Allah says again, Inna ka la tahdi man ahbabta walakinna Allah yahdi man yasha. 
wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadin you do not guide whomsoever you wish allah is the one who guides and allah knows who fears allah the most so all those guys who are there judging you won't know you may never know you are looking at what you see yes we see things we see someone take you see a brother taking cigarette you you correct to tell the brother my brother why are you taking the cigarette he won't tell you you know he's smoking and he's telling you don't judge my heart my brother i can see what you are doing that's why i'm correcting you in the best way right so when you see something you can correct but allah says what bil hikma wal mauiza hasana with wisdom and in a good way style pattern don't abuse them curse them you are going to hell you don't know what you are doing for what when when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us fa bima rahmatin min allah linta lahum walau kunta farran ghaliz wal qalbi lanfaddu min hawlik fa'fu anhum wa astaghfir lahum wa shawirhum fil amr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about him that it, it is because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards you that you were lenient. It is because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you were lenient towards them. If you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have dispersed. So fa'afu anu wa staghfillahu wa shawirun fil amr. So pardon them, you know. Seek forgiveness for them. How many of us see our brothers or sisters engaging in sin and we make dua for them that Allah guides them? A lot of us don't. We curse them and throw them into hell. Subhanallah. When, when you make a good dua for someone, the angel makes a similar dua for you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. Open our doors. Grant us goodness. Grant us increase in our iman. Let's go back to the books. Let's go back to the Quran and read. It is shiva. It is shifa. Yes. It is shifa. Allah has told us in the Quran. And let's go back to the books. The hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the books that we know, we learn from. The du'as are there as well. Let's learn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide us. Have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بارك الله لي ولكم أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحانك اللهم ربنا وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك